Hi, I'm Tom. And I'm Molly. Welcome to Forensic Gameology, hosted by ForensicGameology.com. Reviews for science. In seven minutes or less. Sorrow of the Seas. Sorrow of the Seas is not a real expansion to Sorrow. It's another base set. You don't have to have uh, the base set of Sorrow, the original flavor, to play. Um, we've done a review of Sorrow, so we won't rehash the rules that are similar. But let's talk about some of the differences. In this, we're given dragons, and these dragons move around the board, and they can kill you, and that can be part of the ways that people will lose. Also, they'll eat up these wake tiles, that are the, the path tiles, they're called wake now because you're sailing these ships. You've got these kind of two big ships. I like the stones from the earlier set because they don't, there's not so unwieldy, but that's neither here nor there. These will eat up those tiles, or they'll fight each other, or they'll go off the board. But really, they're obstacles, and they can keep they can keep you from moving, and then you lose, or they can just move right on top of you, and you lose. So that's that's essentially what's been added. So let's talk simplicity versus complexity. I was waiting for it. I was just waiting for it. This game is pretty simple. I've been playing by myself. Turns out, with this little boat making myself go loop de doop, and that's what you do. You play a tile and you move. This does add, this does add. Before your turn, you roll two dice, and if you get a six, seven, or eight, you have to roll one of them to see how the monsters move, or dragons. Die kaiju. Move. And see if they kill each other, they kill the tiles, or kill someone. Other than that, it's pretty simple. You're just trying to stay on the board the longest, and whoever does that wins. Yeah, the complexity added is that they move in a certain order. It's ascending in the order of the number in their corner. Now, if you, when you roll the die and it comes up with, say, a 1, then something with a 1 in the corner will just turn. And so it'll rotate. Whereas everything else will move in the direction that they're on the board. Uh, they'll move in the direction of the arrow that has a 1 on it. So it'll just move down. And that's how they'll sometimes run into each other. And the one that moves is the one that stays on the board or they'll run off the board, or they'll move right up to your ship, and if you can't move it away, you can't move through it, and then you lose, or they'll move right on top of your ship. They also, like I said earlier, they'll move on top of the wake tiles, and those will go away. So um, placing these is a little weird. Uh, they don't seem to go on a lot of these edges. They eventually will get there. Um, there's, a, there's a little bit of complexity, and I think it actually increases game time pretty substantially, uh, which is really odd, because from what I've explained, it doesn't feel like it's that much more complex, but uh, when we've played regular Suro, even using this board, boom, you just play, normal, you're done. Whereas uh, playing this, there's, there's a lot of like, okay, roll, did you get a, yes, I got a six, okay, roll again, I got a three, uh, move the three, rotate that three, move that one three, move, and it's just, there's a lot more going on. Let's talk luck versus strategy. I think this adds both. I think it's going to add the, the luck of where these tiles end up, and you can't really plan for that. You can think, okay, they're generally in this direction. I don't want to go that way. But, but again, Sur is kind of a random game with your, what your tiles and other people's tiles if you end up in the same spot as them take you. But I also think it adds strategy. Uh, in smaller player counts, you tend to stay away from these guys. So you're forced to fight each other. So you're forced to, like, these two ships are like this the entire time. Whereas in normal Sur, if you're just playing a two-player two game, you're going to be as far away from each other so you don't have a chance of being killed by the other person. So that is a part of the strategy, maybe luck of it, but strategy definitely in trying to keep away from those guys because they're, they're bad news bears. Yeah, it does add both, like Molly said. Um, there are a couple more strategy, strategies that, we didn't, that Molly didn't mention that you can try to go head on with these, these monsters and just see if you can dance around them and evade them. Uh, depending on how many people are in the game or are still left in the game, there may be a lot of people in between you and, and your next turn and a lot of movement of those daikaiju. And then uh, you could also just try to stay with another person, which is always dangerous because what if they shoot you off the side of the board because now your fate is in their hands. Um, there is there is the, the luck factor, though, that's so much more present here than in regular Suro. Just, the regular Suro doesn't have the die rolling. It doesn't have things coming to eat you. It's just whatever you draw. In this one, you still have all that plus the new monsters. Fun versus boring. This is fun. I still think that the regular Sura, which I gave a 10 out of 10 and just loved it, I think it's more fun because it's it's what I want out of the game. It's just a short, ready to go, easy to explain game. This one adds 
a little something that maybe can extend the time more than I like. And then on top of that, I have to explain a bunch of stuff. And it's nothing that people can't handle, but it's just not the Suro that I know and love. But don't get me wrong, I do enjoy playing this. I've had fun. And I think, I think that someone who likes Suro will tend to like this as well. Depends on if they like it as much or not. Agreed. I this game is I like Suro better. This game can be played just as Suro, so there's that, and you can just play without these tiles. And I, I always say tiles because I can't remember the names of them. Kai, kai Dai Kaiju. Dai Kaiju. And you can play without them, and you have regular Suro. The ships are a little too big, but I mean, how big of a deal is that? But I don't like this as much as as Suro. That being said, if I didn't know about Suro and this was it, I'd probably like it fine. So this is a great game, pretty tension filled because you're all just trying to stay on the board and not die and then you're, you're adding this element to make it even more tension filled. So there's that. BGG rating. Board Game Geek, I would give this a 7 out of 10. Yeah. Typically play it. I would do 7 I'd suggest out of 10 it. as it's, well. It's no 10 out of 10 Suro for me, but it's like a 7 out of 10. Did I put that too far away? Too far away, man. I'm short. Every time we get to multiples of 500 subscribers, we give away free glitter painting of your favorite geeky thing. So make sure to subscribe now on YouTube. It could be you that wins. Sorrow of the Seas. We've presented the evidence. You be the judge.